The 10th flight of Starship is definitely the success SpaceX has been waiting for, but despite the impressive results, the mission still faced several issues during flight, including some close call moments. These problems need to be addressed before the next launch. So today, let's break down what those issues were and why they happened. First, we need to talk about perhaps the most breath-holding moment of the entire flight, what happened right around the T plus 47 mark. As the ship began re-entry, a glowing plasma sheath formed over the aero surfaces. Then, at T plus 4659, during a view from the engine bay camera, the entire screen went white for several frames, a clear sign of a high-energy event. As the brightness faded and the image stabilized, the extent of the damage quickly became apparent. First, a gaping hole had appeared in the left side of the engine skirt. Debris was scattered everywhere, including one large piece that shot across the frame from right to left. Once the video compression recovered, it became clear that this piece had impacted Raptor sea level engine position E3, leaving a visible mark. Further analysis showed significant damage to the engine skirt, likely caused by the explosion. The view then switched to a camera looking down the left side of the ship, where even more damage could be seen. A stringer bent at a right angle to the hull, along with pieces of insulation and metal flapping in the airstream. Despite the damage, Starship successfully made it through re-entry. The aft flaps, particularly the left one, suffered visible damage similar to what we saw on the forward flaps of earlier generation ships. During the belly flop maneuver, the full extent of the destruction became clear. A significant portion of the left aft flap was missing, especially near the root. Fortunately, all six engines appeared to remain operational, and the vehicle ultimately completed a successful landing, testament to the incredible resilience of the design. Still, the big question remains, what caused this anomaly? There have been many theories proposed to explain this incident, and each brings some valid points to the table. The most obvious explanation is that some piece of orbital debris may have gotten caught in the engine bay skirt. One suggestion, while not entirely implausible, is that the vehicle may have collided with one of the Starlink satellite simulators it deployed. These dummy satellites weren't ejected with as much force as many expected, at least based on prior simulation videos and promotional material released before the test. During the payload ejection, you can actually see one of the Starlink dummies begin to tumble immediately after separation. This suggests that they didn't gain enough momentum to clear the spacecraft entirely, and some may have lingered nearby. Since the ship re-entered the atmosphere while these simulators were still loosely following, it's possible at least in theory, that one could have drifted back and struck the vehicle as it decelerated faster than the free-floating simulators. However, critics of this theory have pointed out that it's unlikely the simulators would remain on the same trajectory, especially after the Raptor engine relight. Additionally, there didn't appear to be any strong aerodynamic forces acting at the time of the failure. If you watch the explosion closely, the debris just sort of floats in place rather than being forcefully thrown outward. It didn't look like it was getting swept away by high-speed airflow. This suggests the failure may not have been caused by an external object or aerodynamic pressure, but rather an internal event. So what kind of internal event could we be talking about? One theory involves the plumbing that runs from the cavity above the false ceiling down to the base of the flap root. This area seems to align with the origin point of the explosion seen during re-entry. It's possible that an overpressure event during engine chill caused a blocked pipe to violently clear, launching ice or cryogenic material at high velocity and damaging the aft section of the vehicle. That said, this explanation hinges on rare conditions. Overpressure alone causing that level of destruction is unlikely without other contributing factors. Still, Starship is no stranger to unusual or unexpected failure modes. Another possibility is simpler. Gas escaping into the already glowing airstream. If a large volume of gas suddenly vents into the hypersonic flow, it would cause a dramatic increase in visible brightness, which could account for the large flash observed. This doesn't necessarily mean an explosion in the structural sense, but it could look like one. Interestingly, one of the official SpaceX commentators mentioned something that may be relevant. He said, 
When we started doing these missing tile tests, we were intentionally removing them only in the skirt. That's not over your fuel tank or anything structurally critical for holding the vehicle together. His point was that plasma buildup in the skirt region, already a hot zone during re-entry, could have led to localized overheating, potentially causing a failure. I must say the decision to conduct missing tile experiments only on the skirt makes a lot of sense. That area isn't directly protecting critical components like tanks or avionics, so it was the safest place to stress test the heat shield's resilience without putting the entire mission at risk. Smart design, even if it might have unintentionally contributed to the event we saw. Once again, it was the aft flaps that took the brunt of the damage, and honestly, they held together like superheroes. Going forward, there might be some design adjustments to help mitigate this. For example, the rear flaps could be angled slightly more leeward, or the inner surface could be tapered, similar to how it appeared after the melting subsided. It's also possible that minor tweaks to the heat shield alone could solve the problem. On the other hand, the front flaps performed exceptionally well, which was a key design goal for this version of Starship. Block 2 features smaller front flaps, placed closer to the tip of the nose cone and positioned further leeward. This redesign helps keep the plasma flow from directly impacting the hinge and seal between the flap and the nose cone, a problem that existed on Block 1. In the earlier design, plasma was striking the hinge directly, especially during peak heating. Now, with the new placement, that issue appears to be resolved, greatly improving thermal protection and durability. The Starlink deployment is another major milestone. While this first deployment wasn't flawless, some of the satellites seemed to bump against the top edge of the deployment door, it's still a huge step forward. That minor issue likely just requires a small adjustment to the holding or ejection mechanism, perhaps tweaking it to push the satellites out more in line with their center of mass. It's a fixable detail. One of the lingering questions people still have is about the Starship's appearance at Splashdown. At the moment of ocean touchdown, the rocket looks distinctly orange, with the nose cone appearing slightly white. It's striking how closely this coloration resembles NASA's Space Launch System, SLS. What we're actually seeing is the underside, or belly, of Starship. The aerodynamic flaps, fins, are folded up and away from our point of view, making them less visible. The orange hue toward the bottom of the vehicle has led many to speculate that we're seeing the bare material underneath the heat shield tiles, possibly exposed steel. One theory suggests that the heat shield unzipped during descent, meaning a large number of tiles detached in a cascading failure. According to this idea, the tiles initially withstood re-entry heating, but once the vehicle encountered denser air and higher aerodynamic pressures, a failure point allowed airflow to get underneath the tiles, triggering a domino effect. However, there's evidence that challenges this theory. If you rewind the footage to just before the flip and burn maneuver, you can clearly see an orange tint at the root of the fin's leading edge. Watching closely, the tiles in that region appear intact. There's no indication of missing tiles. This suggests that the orange color may not be from missing insulation, but rather a surface effect on the tiles themselves. During the belly flop phase of descent, some tiles exhibit a visible orange or reddish hue, possibly due to surface coating changes or high temperature chemical reactions. One plausible explanation is that Starship's black heat shield tiles made from a silicon carbide composite may undergo oxidation when exposed to an oxygen rich environment at extreme temperatures. Normally, this results in a clear or whitish silica layer. However, if the reaction occurs in the presence of other oxides, such as iron oxide, it can result in an orange or red tinted glaze. Glaze. This is similar to how orange ceramic glazes are produced when silica glass interacts with trace metal impurities. So the observed color may be due to oxidation, contamination, or chemical changes in the tile material itself. Additionally, red or orange deposits could also be remnants of the skirt section or any metal components that burned off during re-entry. Importantly, the re-entry footage being studied shows no evidence of massive tile shedding or material ejection. The observed visual phenomena glowing plasma tile discoloration are consistent with high temperature atmospheric entry rather than catastrophic failure. The only visibly stressed areas are the tail ends of the aft flaps, which bore the brunt of the heating due to the extreme 90 degree angle of attack. Again, it's worth noting that many parts of the vehicle were not fully tiled. Some were simply painted over for this test flight. SpaceX seems to be deliberately testing Starship at the upper limits of survivability, including extreme re-entry angles that even the space shuttle couldn't endure. In the end, the heat shield remains the most difficult challenge in the Starship program. Other systems, propulsion, avionics, control, are relatively straightforward by comparison. But no one has previously attempted to develop a fully reusable, rapidly reflyable heat shield.
The current hexagonal tile design is just the starting point, and many more flight tests will be needed to iterate, learn, and refine. Flight 10 could be considered one of the most worthwhile missions for SpaceX in a long time. The goal was data, and they got plenty of it. The rocket was put through a wide range of tests, and it handled them one by one. SpaceX confirmed that the Super Heavy booster performed as expected, making a controlled splashdown in the Gulf just minutes after liftoff from South Texas. This marks a notable improvement. During the previous Starship flight in May, the booster broke apart during a similar splashdown attempt. The upper Starship spacecraft, designed to eventually carry cargo or humans into orbit, also made significant progress, despite flying with only dummy payloads for this test mission. For the first time, the vehicle successfully deployed mock satellites and managed to relight an engine while in orbit. According to SpaceX's post-flight recap, moving into the critical re-entry phase, Starship was able to gather data on the performance of its heat shield and structure as it was intentionally stressed to push the envelope on vehicle capabilities. Using its four flaps for control, the spacecraft arrived at its splashdown point in the Indian Ocean, successfully executed a landing flip, and completed the flight test with a landing burn and soft splashdown. Tonight's mission will no doubt boost morale for SpaceX engineers after months of setbacks. Whether Starship test flights end in explosive failures or triumphant successes, the company maintains the same stance. These are learning experiences, and perfection isn't the goal. Progress is. This success also paves the way for what could be Flight 11 by late September. That timeline now seems realistic. Since today's mission went mostly as planned, federal regulators are unlikely to require a formal investigation into Flight 10, nor will the FAA likely ask SpaceX to submit additional documentation to resolve technical issues, as it did following the previous three missions.